Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is brought to you by Blowfish. They're offering customers 20% off at 4hangovers.com slash inside. Hey everyone, welcome to Inside Gaming for Tuesday. That is right, and for the first time, Sony showed the PlayStation 5 in action. And boy does it look sweet. That's how we're gonna, we're gonna brand it that way now. PlayStation 5! We got to see lightning fast load times plus Sony's future plans for the PlayStation 4. Brian with the inner caps, come on man. Yeah. That S, it's a brand. Could this be the last PlayStation ever? Because it looks like Sony's planning on a brave new cloud gaming future for the PlayStation 5. It's not going discless or anything like that, but it's pretty clear that Sony thinks that streaming games will be the future. Now, none of this was done publicly, but a leaked video of an investor meeting shows Sony officials comparing the performance of the PlayStation 4 Pro versus the next generation PlayStation, which, yeah, they still haven't named yet, yeah. but we're calling it the PlayStation 5. The clip was less than a minute long, but they used the Spider-Man game to show off the power of the new machine. Right, Brian? Yeah, the reason they showed it off primarily seemed to be load times or lack thereof. It took the PS4 Pro, which is of course Sony's current high-end console, more than eight seconds <laughs> to load up a section of the game, Wait. a whopping eight seconds. And what about the PS5? Less than a second. Ooh, wow, that's really good. 0.83 seconds, in fact, so a lot quicker. I don't know, for, for five, I, I want it to be like barely measurable. Eight times, five, 10 times faster. Huh. The new machine also had much easier time loading dynamic maps as the player traveled through them. Of course, that comparison was being made on a current gen game. So will we get the same fast loading when it comes to next gen games, which will be a lot more graphically intensive. We will see. I mean, probably not, to be honest with you. But hey, yeah, it might, it might actually even out in the long run. You yeah. get those 8K textures, they just right. take a little more time to pull over. Exactly. At the very least, it was a glimpse into what Sony thinks will be a key selling feature of this new console. Really fast load times and great graphics. Now we know a lot of this for a few weeks now, ever since PS5's lead architect, Mark Cerny, good old Mark, gave an interview to Wired where he broke down the specs. Those Still waiting on that neck three. You're not getting Can that. Can you imagine how fast it's gonna load? Those fast load times will be due to the fact that PS5 will use solid states for storage instead of hard drive. Yeah, they're like fancy solid states too. They keep saying that they're like, no, these are better than PC solid oh, yeah. states. Next gen PlayStation will also have a third gen AMD Ryzen CPU with eight cores. Wow. And this GPU will be a custom job that's part of AMD's Radeon Navi family. Brian, what does that mean for the new hardware? So Cerny stressed that all that new hardware means that the PS5 is about 10 times faster than the PS4 Pro when it comes to loading complex Scene. So over and over again, he stressed the faster loader times and he seemed to think that's just gonna revolutionize everything. I mean, he's not wrong. Yeah, that's great. A lot of modern game design is built around hiding or pacing out loads. So like take Spider-Man, for example. You can only swing so fast. There's like a hard cap in game about your velocity because you can't outpace the game's loading. I remember this was actually a weird thing on like uh, PlayStation 2 with Grand Theft Auto 3. If you were really flying in a car, you could like outpace the loading of the game. Yeah. And you would just go out in nether space. There are a lot of game design things that they can rework now because they don't have to worry about bottlenecking, but we'll see what that means in the long run. We'll see what it means in reality. Imagine this, PlayStation 5 and Anthem. <gasps> no more loading in Anthem, oh, it's all it ever did. It's fixed, finally. As for Sony's recent investor presentation, here's what else we also learned. It included some slides that listed features of the new machine. All that fancy new hardware will support features like ray tracing, huh. support for 8K graphics, huh. 3D audio. Oh, it's everywhere. Oh, uh, and the new console will have disc support, huh. so they're not going all digital yet. Interesting. You can put a disc in it. So what Sony hasn't addressed is the date of release. It's price or games. What's it gonna play? Maybe we'll see some of that at E3 this year. They also haven't talked about what countries it might release in first or anything about the user experience. It's also not clear if Sony's giving up the PlayStation 4 or anytime soon. No, they're not gonna do that. I mean, it's such a huge they've, platform. They've sold 100 million consoles. Mm -hmm. uh, in another slide, Sony told investors that, quote, it will remain the engine of engagement and profitability for the next three years. So there you go, three years about. Was it referring to the PlayStation 4, Brian? Yep, that right. is. And uh, it makes sense considering, like you guys said, it's been the unquestioned winner this generation. It's already sold uh, nearly 97 million consoles. Last time I checked, it's probably over 100 now, making it one of the best selling consoles of all time. So Sony has killed the console game. Almost everyone has been uh, an all-time bestseller. Crazy ride we've had. They know what they're doing. PlayStation. They know what they're doing. Sony's not gonna give up that user base, and in fact, they're gonna be depending on it, depending on all those players to be early adopters of the PS5. That's just how it goes. And then, you know, you seed it into the early adopters, they have a good experience, they tell everyone else. That's, that's the way it works. Mm -hmm. uh, they also stress that they've got an, quote, outstanding roster of exclusive AAA games still to come. It showed screenshots of The Last of Us 2, Death Stranding, and Ghosts of Tsushima. Those are probably gonna be cross-generation releases. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I'm really excited. So I'm gonna buy each two times like two consoles to play them on, it's gonna be like GTA 5 all over you again. You are the common man. <laughs>
<laughs> As for the next console, it looks like Sony has a lot of plans for cloud gaming too, which could also link back to PlayStation 4. It's kind of interesting. In the presentation, they compare the business models of all the previous PlayStation. The first two use discs, while the PS3 and PS4 use a combination of discs and download. The next gen PlayStation, however, Brian, what will it do? It's gonna use all of those plus streaming, which is a pretty clear indication of cloud gaming capability. And that definitely makes sense considering the recently announced partnership where Sony is teaming up with Microsoft to use its Azure cloud platform. So they've uh, definitely got a lot of streaming plans in the future. Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo all together on the Azure cloud gaming platform. Mm -hmm. We never thought we'd see it. It's the gamers network. Yeah, We've been waiting. Azure is a weird word to say. Azure. Azure. No, just say Azure. Azure. Azure, guys. Sony even showed a forward-looking chart in this presentation to investors, and that indicated streaming is their future growth area. Here's the line that really underscores that. Sony says its vision is, quote, a massively enhanced PlayStation community where enriched and shared PlayStation experiences can be seamlessly enjoyed independent of time and place with or without a console. <laughs> Sounds like the beginning to a George R. R. Martin novel. Well, that may paint you a picture of enriched <laughs> Keep experience. going, I'm almost there. Uh, <laughs> is this PS5? Google Google Stadia? What the f what? It's everything now, right, Brian? Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. So Sony, it's clearly not giving up consoles this generation with all the quick loading times and super cool hardware, but it sure seems possible that this could be one of the last generations of consoles, you know, before we just move everything to the cloud. Yeah, or I guess what's more likely is the current consoles just stay there and then games move increasingly away from being processed locally on your thing. You know, it's like the VHS player you have for 30 years. My Xbox, basically, I don't even play games on it anymore. It's just the Netflix box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just a streaming video box. Yeah, so. as long as the PlayStation 4 can output 4K, and it can, as long as you stream stuff to it, it's gonna be future-proof for a while. Now they can just say that like, it's not about PlayStation 4s, it's about the PlayStation brand. And then we have a reach of, you know, 400 million of the PlayStation. The PlayStation experience. Yes, sorry, enriched PlayStation the experience. experience. Of course, Sony's already experimenting with streaming with PlayStation Now, a uh, service they kicked up a while ago after they bought Gaikai. The same way that Xbox is experimenting with Game Pass. Game Pass isn't a streaming service. No, no, it's no. a download service, yeah, but it's like a subscription service where there's a roster of games you can play. PlayStation Now is kind of similar, but a little different. You can just pay for the subscription service and that gives you a library. And you can stream that those games, right? Mm -hmm. PlayStation Now. That's great. Uh, but as bandwidth theoretically gets bigger and bigger, companies like Google are betting that that will eliminate the need for consoles or high-end PCs altogether. And they're not wrong. Yeah. Still though, the fact that Sony's coming out with a PS5 means we're not there yet. We're closer, for sure. Not everyone has a T1 and connection to the internet. That's a dated ass reference, Brian. Do you know how fast T1 lines are? <laughs> no, I have no idea. I'm old. They're incredibly slow. Yeah, right? They're like, they're like 300 megabits or something, right? Oh, less than that. Are they less like, than that? It's like 300K. Oh. Yeah, T1s like, were a big deal when we were all on dial up, which was a million years now, ago. No, come on. T1s must have been upgraded by now, right? Thank you for defending me, Bruce. <laughs> Once, I remember, this was like 10, 15 years ago, there was some conference with GameStop. And somebody's like, uh, hey, GameStop, are you worried about downloads? And the guy was like, Pfft. It takes like five days to download something on a T1 line. And <laughs> at that point, T1s were already like way outmoded. So until we all move into the clouds, uh, Sony's gonna keep hedging its bets and seeing what draws in the most players right now. That's hardware. That's just what people come to expect and that's the experience they want. It's a box with everything. Cloud streaming, disc, uh, optical out, uh, 3D audio, 2D audio, binaural audio. What else, what else? Can Enriched experiences. Uh, enriched experience. And the five. Uh, but Brian, what else does a PlayStation 5 have? A girlfriend who will listen to your feelings. Wow, that's pretty good. I, I know. That game. It's got everything. You can drag the slider up and make her boots huge. <laughs> Oh, there's gonna be new VR. Oh God, that's gonna be the end of the human experience. I mean, it'll be the end of human experience for you, Lawrence. Only you. I'm the only one that matters. Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is brought to you by Blowfish. This is a hangover cure slash hangover aid that works because it's just the simple ingredients you need to actually get through a hangover. So these are fizzing tablets that you drop in a glass of water. It contains caffeine and aspirin and a lovely lemon flavor. Uh, because uh, I like to try everything that we're sponsored by, I had the wonderful task of inducing a hangover. I had a pretty fun Friday night, went and saw John Wick. It was great, transcendental experience. Next morning wasn't feeling too hot, but uh, let me tell you, Blowfish was actually really great. It, Tastes great, you drop it in water so you get your hydration, you get some aspirin to help with that uh, headache, and you get some caffeine to kickstart your body. Uh, by the time I was out of the shower, I was feeling fresh and ready to go. So after trying it, it's gonna be in my medicine cabinet for future days. I've graduated from just taking a couple of ibuprofen and feeling like crap. Uh, Blowfish works well, uh, and the only true cure is to just not drink a lot, but come on, let's be honest. It's 2019 and who can do that? 
Uh, so it works twice as fast as regular pills. It's much gentler on your stomach. They mentioned that coffee can irritate your stomach and I've definitely been there. So it's a great way to sort of get what you need inside your body so that you can get up and get moving and get on with your life. And we have 20% off for you guys. You can get that discount code at fourhangovers.com slash inside. Once more, that's 20% off Blowfish at fourhangovers.com slash inside. Thank you for the sponsorship, Blowfish, and thank you for giving me my Saturday back. Oh, I didn't, oh wait, Cure Hangover is the inside gaming way. Curious to see if they just, just pop the thing off. I think the telltale will be if there's just an exposed SATA port with nothing plugged into it, but we'll see right now. Controller. 